hi guys welcome back to my channel this is part of bithola and my name is mujela Olu. i'm so happy to be here once again today i want to talk about ptc or cmc as the case may be that's pre-trial conference or case management conference whatever it is called in your jurisdiction and i'm making this video because i met a lover of battle with Ola in court you know a few weeks ago and uh you know we spoke i'm so happy with the way he approached me because I've always thought of how I will not freak out if I meet people that watch me online in real life. I'm just not big on physical meetups, but uh, when I when this uh, person approached me, was like, "Can I see you? Oh, I are you bad up with a lot?" I wanted to deny, but I couldn't. And I'm glad that he actually excused me from the people I was with because those people do not know that I have a channel. I haven't told them and I do not intend to tell them. You know, this kind of hide hide that I'm doing, maybe this is why my channel is where that's why we are where we are, we are where we are where, you know. But I'm just hoping that the channel will sell itself and maybe one day YouTube will monetize me and I'll start making money. But Till then, and even after then, let's continue to churn out value. I know that you're enjoying the channel, and I know that uh, you're getting value and telling your friends and spreading the love, and I'm grateful for that. So I'm happy that this person approached me the way that they did, because that was what gave me, you know, the confidence to actually then speak with them for a few minutes. And I found out that they've been watching my channel. They were so grateful for what I'm doing here. Like, I'm just here catching fun and you know talking about what I love to talk about and someone is out there super grateful for it so thank you thank you thank you so much for finding value in what I'm doing and for saying it you know for putting out there it's very important you know it's one thing for you to know that you're getting value it's another thing for you to put it out there and I'm really glad that I'm a recipient of you know such a uh, um, gratitude and show of love uh, from uh, the subscriber, the lover, the watcher of Battle with Ola. So I asked them if they had ever dropped a comment and then it turned out that they had left me uh, a comment on pre-trial conference, which I had not gotten to. So this video is for you. I am doing this. I promised I was going to make this video. I'm sorry that it took this long again, but here we are today. Let's talk about PTC or CMC as the case may be. Pre-trial conference or case management conference, as the name suggests, is used in civil matters. It's not used in criminal matters. It's used in civil matters to uh, manage the case, as it suggests, as the name suggests, you know, to trash out issues that can be trashed out before you go to trial and to give, you know, the parties, the counsel in the, in the matter, the judge, if eventually the PTC judge is still the trial judge, a fair idea of what is going to happen in the matter. So it's a way of uh, having a premonition or, um, you know, looking into the matter, you know, having a bird's eye view of what's, how the matter would go on, you know, and fixing some things that needs to be fixed before you go into trial. So it's usually done upon close of pleadings, 14 days after close of pleadings, the party that filed the matter, the claimant, must apply to court and obtain Form 17. That's in Lagos. I'm sure that uh, the civil procedure rules of each court will make provision for what type or what name the form is to be obtained for PTC or CMC. So um, the claimant will apply for that form for pretrial conference. If the claimant does not do it within the prescribed days, the defendant can apply for it or apply that the case be struck out because it's a very important step before trial. The trial conference leads to trial. So if you have brought a matter, a civil matter to court and you've exchanged pleadings and pleadings have been closed, issues have been joined, it is uh, it behoves on you as the claimant counsel to apply for pretrial conference form so that pretrial conference can be done in the matter. Now, the CMC judge is different from the trial judge but in some cases most cases that i've seen the cmc judge is still the one that will go to trial so it's still the judge especially at the high courts you know it's still the judge that will conduct the trial okay so um what happens is that the judge has to file a report a report for the pretrial conference so basically he's going to be asking questions on the day fixed for the pretrial conference he's going to be asking questions 
that will now inform the content of his report. So this is how it happens. When uh, you have applied for a pretrial conference form and the court has given you a hearing date, when you get to court um, and your case is mentioned or called, the court will ask you, why are we here today? as in all cases, and you say that, uh, my lord, we are here for a pretrial conference, my lord, the matter is slated for PTC or for CMC, and then the court will ask you, are you ready? Ask the other counsel, are they ready? If they are ready, if you are both ready, then the court will hear you. So the court will start by asking questions. So here's a scenario. Uh, why are we here today? My lord, the matter is for PTC, and we have uh, filed our PTC form since the sixth day of May 2022 and we have served the defendant. So the court will ask the defendant, have you been served, are you ready to go? And they'll say yes and then the court will start. The, uh, the judge could start by asking, is there any application in this matter? So I said pretrial conferences for settling issues. For instance, if there's an application, if there are interlocutory applications, you know, in the matter, the court wants to know so that it will know, you know, how to, of the, if there's a preliminary objection, the court wants to know so that you know what to hear first and how to address each application. Then the court wants to know if uh, the matter can be settled amicably and if you have tried amicable settlements or not before proceeding with trial. The court also wants to know if uh, you know you'll be uh, calling witnesses, how many witnesses you're calling, are you calling an expert witness, you know, so many things involved. Uh, and then are you tendering any documents uh, that has been mutually agreed upon by both parties, documents that will not be objected to, that will not uh, lead to any uh, uh, joining of issues or any arguments or position by one party or the other. The court wants to know that. The court wants to know if there's uh, any document that you're going to tender that's in the possession of the other party and if uh, what if how you intend to, you know, uh, bring that document to court, maybe by discovery, by um, uh, asking for, asking them to produce, notice to produce and what have you. So it's basically to go through the entire trial and to see what are the things that we can deal with expeditiously? What are the things that need to go to trial? So the court will also find out what are the issues, you know, in this case. What's the cause of action? Is there any cause of action? Is there any double application or double process that's been filed that we need to expunge, that you need to withdraw or that we need to strike out? You know, is there any issue that uh, is a non-issue that you have raised that we need to strike off? So let's settle the issues that are actually going to trial so that's what a pretrial conference is for and then with the agreement of both so that both so that both parties can agree that this is why we are here this is why we're going to trial and then we we'll fix a date for trial so the court also wants to know how many days would you need for trial claimants how many days would you need to call your witnesses you know for examination cross examination and re-examination don't forget that there's a video on that on the channel you need to watch it please do and um, then the court wants to know the defendant how many days do you need for trial to call your witnesses for examination cross-examination re-examination so can we pick uh, maybe consecutive trial dates or would you want it to be spread out is there any need for it to be spread out uh, are your witnesses uh, ready what type of witnesses are they is there any special procedure that you need or that would occur in this trial so that's basically what ptc is for but uh you know because um these things can only be discovered or settled by means of questioning. So the judge will be questioning both parties and you will be giving answers. So some of the likely questions could be, uh, is there any application in this matter? Then if you have an application, you say, my lord, we have a preliminary objection. The other party might say, my lord, we have an interlocutory application or we have an interim application. We have an application for an interim injunction or for an interim order. And then you tell the court, the court will look at it. When was it filed? Uh, as the other party being served, or is it ex parte? The court will look through its record, look through it, look at the merits of it, okay? And then the court will look at if uh, you will be able to eventually move it, and then it would have to write a ruling on it, or if it's an unnecessary or frivolous application so that it can be struck off or struck out immediately, and you know, just to decongest that particular case's docket. So 
That's really what pretrial conference is about. So that's one question. Then the court could ask, is there any likelihood of parties settling the matter amicably? So the court will ask the claimant, have you made any moves for ADR? Yes, we've made moves. We've been met with rebuff. My lord, we've settled what can be settled amicably. The other issues before this court cannot be settled amicably. My lord, we are asking for a declaratory order. You know that uh, when you're asking for a declaratory order, that uh, you cannot settle that amicably. Because you need the court to make that order so that it can stand and be binding forever. Or the other party, the court will ask them, have you made any moves for amicable settlement? Or um, if uh, the, the claimant is saying that you have met them with rebuff, the court wants to find out from you also, why have you met them with rebuff? Are you saying you don't want to settle this matter amicably? What exactly is the substance of this case? And why can't it be settled amicably? Uh, is uh, the client willing? Have you let them know that they have the option of ADR settlement, you know, all of that, just to ascertain if you have explored alternative dispute resolution. So that's one question that the court might likely ask. And then if you find out that there has uh, been uh, any double process or application in the matter, PTC is where you need to withdraw it. My Lord, we filed so, so, so on the so, so date. Then we filed so, so, so another application. My Lord, we seek to withdraw that of so so date and uh, abide by that of so 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 date so that's another opportunity for you to withdraw any needless frivolous or double repeated applications or process that you might have filed then the court could ask will there be any need to call an expert witness in this matter yes my lord it's a land dispute we want to call the Soviet general of the state or oh, my lord it's a uh, has to do with uh, some medical issues so we'll be calling a doctor a cardiologist from uh, the something something teaching hospital what have you so the court wants to be sure and the court wants to know what you have put in place to ensure that that witness will show up for the matter and then the court wants to also confirm from the other party if that is a necessary part of the trial or not basically trying to cut off all unnecessary parts of the course of action or the suit before it goes into trial. That is what pre-trial conference or case management conference is for. Then the court could ask, would there be need for any of the parties to call an interpreter or to use an interpreter during trial? Yes, you can tell the court, I will need a full full day interpreter, or we need a, a full an interpreter, I would need a, an outside interpreter, we need an Igbo interpreter, we need a Etiv interpreter in this case, we need a Yoruba interpreter, so that the court can uh, ascertain that it has provisions for that, and if not, the trio of the court, the claimant, and the defendant will be able to agree on how to facilitate the presence of such an interpreter during trial, during the case management conference. Then another likely question is, uh, is there any document likely to be tendered with the consensus of both parties? Those are documents that are non-contentious. So yes, yes, you have shown it. The court uh, might ask that you show it to each other. Or maybe you've even exchanged the documents or maybe it's a document that's in possession of uh, one party and uh, you have uh, spoken to them you've contacted them they've assured you that they will be you know tendering it in evidence so that you can use it for your own purpose you know the court would settle that once and for all and if there are contentious documents and if there are contentious documents as well you you basically give the court an idea of the kinds of documents that you intend to tender during trial and then, then the court can ask how long will it take for both sides to prove their case you could tell the court you need like three adjournments that uh, you have three short witnesses and you take one per day or you take all three in a day you need one adjournment the other party could need five adjournments you could have ten witnesses uh, maybe three short ones and maybe one long witness you know uh, they could say that they are not certain about you know the length of their examination so they'll be asking for four days or five days five adjournments so the court just wants to have an idea of how long the entire trial will take trial starts when you call your witness that's how you open trial you call your CW and claimant witness one and then trial ends when defense closes its case that's DW1, DW2, DW3, the last DW you call and then you say that's the case for the defendant, that's the case for the defense and um, you close your case, that's when trial ends and then you uh, 
pick a date for adoption of written address which i've talked about already on this channel since someone has asked for uh, a video on adoption of written addresses in civil matters i'm going to try and get to it and do another video because the one i did was for a criminal matter i'm going to do that of uh, civil matters too so i hope that you watch it when i do it so uh when the court has ascertained the number of days that you need both parties need the court will then ask the registrar to give you you know maybe three clear days four clear days so you could have consecutive trial dates or it could be split depend on the depending on the court's diary and you know the calendar you know it could be that maybe the dates that you want to pick they are split or broken by public holidays or court holidays or what have you so but the once the court has ascertained that oh you need five days or you need two days for this trial the court will ask the registrar to look for a date and then consult with both of you you look at your diaries and then both it's a three-way um, meeting so the court and both parties would agree on the dates for trial and then the matter will then be adjourned for trial to the first day of those days so um that is how ptc or cmc case management conferences are conducted so the questions can differ but essentially you know that what the court is trying to do with both parties is to be certain that this matter needs to go to trial at all and if it does what are the issues what are the non-issues what are the documents what are who, are who are the witnesses what do you need for the success and the expeditious you know execution of this trial that's essentially what the court is trying to ascertain and then to pick a date for the actual trial so that is how a PTC is conducted. I hope that I answered your question. Thank you so much for meeting me and for, uh, you know, sharing all that love with me about Battle with Ola. I'm really grateful for it. I hope this answers your question. I hope you, that you watch this video because it's very important for me when I answer questions with videos that uh, people actually who have asked the questions come back to watch them. You know, that's when it means that, you know, the answer has actually been very useful and of course other people who have not asked the questions will also watch and be blessed so i hope that you have a lovely day wherever you are thank you for watching this video i will see you in my very next video to do